So, you thought your car was just a speed machine with a cup holder? Think again. From Volkswagen to Mercedes, Toyota to Tesla, it appears that every major car brand has joined the race in data collection. And trust me, they're not merely interested in how fast you drive or how sharply you turn. They're keeping an eye on everything from your latte preferences to your, let's just say, more intimate moments. Your car exposed. Imagine stepping into your car, not just as a driver, but as a data source. This unsettling reality is what Mozilla's Privacy Not Included report unveils. In a sweeping review of 25 major car brands, including giants like Nissan, Mercedes, Kia and Tesla, none passed the test on protecting our privacy. This unprecedented failure raises a red flag for every consumer. It's not just about where you drive anymore. These brands are collecting deeply personal data. We're delving into realms that feel uncomfortably intimate, from your sexual activity to your immigration status, your race and even the subtlest of your facial expressions. Imagine a world where your car knows your weight, your health status, your orientation, and can even make guesses about your genetic information. And how are they collecting all this? Through an array of sensors, microphones and cameras integrated into your vehicle. Connect your phone or any device to your car and you've just opened up another channel for data collection. It doesn't end there. Car apps, company websites and even interactions with dealerships all of these are avenues for these brands to gather your personal information. And here's the kicker. They can share or even sell this data to third parties. In a world where massive amounts of data are constantly being collected, data security breaches cannot be overlooked. Take Volkswagen and its daughter company Audi, who suffered a breach impacting 3.3 million users. Or Toyota, which faced a data leak affecting more than 2 million users over the course of a decade. Even Mercedes-Benz disclosed a leak through a third-party vendor in 2022, exposing personal details of 1.6 million individuals. Over 600 hours of in-depth analysis by Mozilla's researchers have led to a clear message. Modern cars are not just vehicles, but sophisticated data collectors, with our privacy hanging in the balance. The implication of this is huge. We're not just talking about a breach of privacy. It's a full-scale intrusion into the most personal aspects of our lives. Take Nissan the report's worst offender. Nissan's privacy policy is like that one relative at family gatherings who knows a bit too much about everyone. Creepy, but sadly part of the package. They come right out and say that they can collect and share your sexual activity, health diagnostics, genetic information, and other sensitive personal information for targeted marketing purposes. And that's not all. They also say they can share and even sell your characteristics, psychological trends, predispositions, behavior, attitudes, intelligence, and abilities, to others for targeted marketing purposes. Yes, Nissan says they can infer things like how smart you are, if you have a predisposition to drink, if you're acting depressed, and if you're any good at chess. And then they say they can make as much money off that very personal information as they can. Nissan has been criticized for stating in their privacy policy that they can collect, share, and potentially sell a wide range of intimate personal information. Here's the thing though, there's a pretty high probability other car companies are doing the exact same thing. They just aren't as open and honest about it in their privacy policies. The use of vague language like, for example, might include, and, as well as other information, could very well be hiding the fact that these companies also collect personal information. Here's something else you should know about Nissan. If you use their connected services, you better be prepared to tell every single person who gets in your car all about how much data they collect and why. Yep, Nissan puts that all on you. Just by sitting in a vehicle that uses Nissan Connect services, you agree to have your data collected by Nissan. So be prepared to have some awkward conversations with your passengers about how Nissan says they can collect data on things like sexual activities and intelligence. Because when you agree to Nissan Connect Terms of Service, you agree to promise to tell people all about how Nissan can and will collect their data when they're in your car. So, Nissan owners, get to work reading all these privacy and legal documents so you're prepared to educate and inform every single passenger in your car about the data collection and privacy. Because remember, you promised. Then there's Mercedes. Mercedes-Benz vehicles are known for their high-end price and luxuriousness. Unfortunately, I can't say they should be known for their privacy. From personal preferences to driving behavior, from biometric to geolocation data, the depth of information gathered by Mercedes is staggering. What does Mercedes do with all this data? For starters, they admit to sharing and possibly selling some of it to marketing service providers for targeted advertising. Imagine your driving habits being used to tailor ads, nudging you to buy more. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. 
They also say they can share your information with law enforcement, where disclosure is deemed reasonably necessary. Lines like that are fairly common in the privacy policies of car makers. The concern is, what does reasonably necessary mean when it comes to sharing data with law enforcement or governments? This all gets a bit more frightening when you consider there are too many law enforcement agencies and governments around the world that might not have good intentions when wanting to access this information about you, your car, where you go and who you go with. Picture this. You're cruising through the city in your luxurious Mercedes-Benz with the Mercedes Mia app and connected devices. Say you're driving to an abortion clinic from a state in the US that bans abortion to one that doesn't. It's possible law enforcement could force Mercedes-Benz to give up your location and use that information to prosecute you for seeking reproductive health care. Or you live in a country where authoritarian leadership takes over the government and demands the ability to track people they deem political adversaries. Mercedes could be compelled by the government to turn over location data or any sensory information they can collect on you. These aren't far-fetched ideas in our increasingly connected world. The very data that makes your Mercedes a marvel of modern technology could also be turned against you, breaching not just your privacy, but also potentially infringing on your personal freedoms and rights. But surely, with such extensive data collection, Mercedes must have robust security measures. Not quite. The brand disclosed a significant data leak affecting 1.6 million customers in 2022, and security researchers have also found a number of security vulnerabilities over the past few years. And then there was an app glitch that exposed personal information back in 2019. Let's look at Kia. Kia's approach to privacy is all over the place, but mostly it's bad. Let's cut to the chase. Kia says they can collect a lot of sensitive and personal information they have no business collecting. The list is long and includes some of the creepiest data categories you can imagine, like your genetic information and sex life. Could there be a good reason for your car maker to have that information? Probably not. If there is, you definitely won't find it in Kia's privacy policy. Kia can also collect, according to the US privacy policy, information about your medical condition, physical or mental disability, racial or ethnic origin, and religious or philosophical beliefs. They even say they can collect the contents of certain mail, emails and text messages. We can only assume that means your communications with Kia, but that's such a weird and vague way to put it. Now, Kia does say that they don't collect sensory data, like audio and visual. That's a relief since it's pretty common for car makers to collect the data created by vehicle features that use microphones and cameras. They also say that they don't collect biometric data, like your face and fingerprints. That's another load off, since sharing that information comes with certain risks. But wait, unique biometric information is listed as an example of sensitive personal information that they do collect. It seems like some of Kia's data collecting disclosures were written to cast as wide a data catching net as possible. Their policy even mentions personal information described in the California Civil Code, which means just about any personal information under the sun capable of being associated with you. So what control do drivers have over their own data and can they ask Kia to delete it? Unfortunately, unless you won the location-based privacy lottery, then probably not. Residents of strong privacy law states in the US have the special right to request that their data be deleted. People living in Europe under GDPR have the right to delete their data too. But call me crazy, I think everyone should have the right to get their data deleted, not just the lucky ones who live under strong privacy laws. Speaking of having control of your data, Kia doesn't always. Earlier this year, the car brand went viral for the worst reason. They're stealing Kias and Hyundais with a cell phone charger. Just the Kia challenge on TikTok led to hundreds of car thefts, including 14 reported crashes and eight fatalities. Thieves, known as the Kia boys, posted instructional videos about how to bypass the vehicle security system using only a USB cable. Kia ended up having to patch 8 million cars to fix it. Call me a tough customer, but I believe taking control of someone else's car should be more challenging than charging your phone. Then, there were the security researchers who discovered a security vulnerability in Kia that could allow hackers to do things like use the vehicle's VIN number to remotely unlock the car, start it, flash the lights, lock the user out of managing their vehicle, and lastly, remotely access the 360 view camera and view live images from the car. Kia's slogan is movement that inspires, but after reading their privacy policies, all I'm feeling inspired to do is take the bus. Let's take a look at Tesla, the world's most valuable car maker. On the surface, Tesla's commitment to privacy seems promising. They clearly state in their privacy documentation no selling or renting of your personal information to third parties. 
In an industry where the bar for privacy is often worryingly low, this stance by Tesla is a welcomed relief. However, despite Tesla's assurances, their track record paints a different picture. In April 2023, Reuters reported stories from a number of former Tesla employees, saying that videos taken from cameras in Teslas were regularly shared over internal chat systems within the company. The claims were so shocking that US lawmakers demanded answers from Tesla on what was going on and what they were doing to stop this privacy-violating behaviour. The report was also followed by a class action lawsuit from a Tesla driver for violating their privacy. Tesla's track record of questionable privacy practices doesn't end there. There's the story widely reported in May 2023 of a Tesla whistleblower sharing over 100 gigabytes of confidential files with the German newspaper alleging Tesla attempted to downplay problems with their autopilot system. These files contain sensitive customer, employee and business partner data, and the leak is being investigated as a serious privacy law violation. As one expert quoted in this Wired article, Tesla has a track record of setting high expectations, but often struggles to meet them. That expert might not have been talking about privacy at Tesla, but I feel like his quote certainly applies to it. Opting out of vehicle data sharing in a Tesla comes with a stark warning reduced functionality and potential damage to your vehicle. It's a tough choice for privacy conscious owners. Maintain your privacy or risk impairing your vehicle's performance. Here's the bottom line with Tesla. They clearly state they won't sell your data. Good, they say they won't share anything that personally identifies you with third parties for their marketing purposes unless you opt in. That's okay, even though you would rather they not do that at all. But their privacy notice also has too many things in it that should not be there really vague language, lack of clarity on sharing, and they also seem to hide a lot of what they could be doing behind legal terms like fulfill other legitimate interests of Tesla. In the end, while Tesla may set high standards for technological innovation, their commitment to privacy remains a topic for debate. For Tesla owners and admirers alike, it's a reminder to weigh the allure of technology against the potential cost to privacy. So, what does this all mean for you, the consumer? In today's world, a simple button press in your car can connect you to a vast network of data and technology. It's not just about luxury vehicles anymore. By 2030, 95% of new vehicles sold will be connected, making the term smart car as retro as smartphone is today. The evolution of cars into technologically advanced machines is undeniable. From touch sensors to voice commands, the modern car barely needs the physical push of a button. But with this convenience comes a trade-off. Every interaction with your car, from steering to unlocking the doors, creates a digital footprint meticulously recorded and stored. The constant data collection isn't limited to active commands. Simply sitting in your car can generate data, as it passively collects information through various sensors. The reality is, our cars are becoming sophisticated data collectors, often without our explicit consent or awareness. The problem we face is not just data collection by our cars, but also about how securely is this data handled and protected. With all the mysterious sharing and selling on top of these epic level oopsie daisies, you should be worried about all that super personal and detailed information getting into even wronger hands than your car's parent company, like law enforcement, hackers, or just about anyone who can purchase from a data broker. For many, driving isn't just a choice, it's a necessity. Unlike other smart devices, opting out of a connected car isn't a viable option for most. People don't typically choose cars based on their privacy policies, Factors like cost, fuel efficiency and reliability often take precedence. But even if you wanted to prioritise privacy in your car choice, Mozilla's research shows a stark reality. When it comes to privacy, there's little to differentiate one brand from another. They all have significant shortcomings. In this new era of connected vehicles, the responsibility falls unfairly on consumers to navigate a landscape where privacy is often an afterthought. This isn't just a matter of personal preference, but a fundamental concern about how our data, our habits and our lives are being tracked and potentially exploited. As we accelerate into a future where cars are more than just vehicles, it's crucial for us to stay informed and vigilant. Demand better privacy standards from car manufacturers. Understand the privacy policies of your vehicle and make informed choices. Remember, in a world of connected cars, privacy is not just a feature, it's a right that needs safeguarding.